गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स टूडेज टॉपिक इज फिजियो केमिकल एस्पेक्ट ऑफ स्केलेटल मसल्स इन द बिफोर वीडियो आई हैड एक्सप्लेन यू अबाउट द केमिकल कॉम्पोजिशन ऑफ द स्केलेटल मसल्स हेयर इज द फिजियो केमिकल एस्पेक्ट ऑफ द स्केलेटल मसल्स व्हिच इज गोइंग टू शो यू ऑल हाउ द केमिकल्स आर गोइंग टू टेक पार्ट इन द कॉन्ट्रेक्शन एंड द रिलैक्सेशन ऑफ द मसल्स ओके so chemical changes during the muscle contraction what exactly the chemical changes that is going to be occurring during the muscle contraction so here are the chemical changes that we could see during the muscle contractions when a muscle contracts certain chemical changes is takes place simultaneously the sequence of the chemical changes that takes place during the muscle contraction are as follows we'll go on studying step wise what and all happens when okay so the con uh, conversion of the atp to adp see this is the one of the important step that we'll have to study always because atp is a molecule which is going to give energy for the contractions of the muscles isn't it so as i've told you in the earlier video if at all you have seen my video then you will understand what exactly i am speaking about okay the uh, you know the myosin filaments which is having the heads two globular heads which are going to be intact with the actin molecule which is double helical in structure okay so if that has to perform its function it requires certain energy that is in the form of an atp so what is exactly happening with the atp here so the first and the most important chemical change that takes place during the muscle contraction is the conversion of the atp and adp so this conversion of the uh, is brought about by the enzyme atps uh, present in the muscle during the conversion of the molecule of phosphoric acid to to is removed from atp and energy is released for the muscle contraction so what is this phosphor uh, phosphoric acid is been released see atp meaning it is adenosine triphosphate there are three molecules of phosphate molecules present in this particular molecule so removal of one phosphate molecule or the phosphoric acid from that particular molecule is nothing but the breaking down of atp to the adp okay so that is what we are going to explain here see here this is the step which is going to explain you how exactly atp under the uh, enzyme atpase that is the breaking down molecule which is going to break down atp into adp okay adenosine diphosphate there are two phosphate molecules now when after the breakage of the atp so uh, see here i'll come back to this picture see uh, why i have shown this picture is because uh, see during the contraction uh, there is the utilization of atp what happens when the relaxed state see that is what we are going to tell it in the next step here uh, see breaking down of the uh, creatine phosphate or the phospho reactions in uh, certain vertebrate muscles there is a backup source of the high energy phosphate in the form of the creatine phosphate so the next step during this muscle contraction is breaking down of the creatine phosphate to produce uh, the creatine and the phosphoric acid the phosphoric acid molecule combines with the atp adp to form the atp okay so again there should be a uh, adenosine triphosphate it should be stable isn't it so therefore the creatine and the phosphoric acid is again combining together to form an atp again for the another contraction see once the atp is broken down into atp some work is done there okay okay once the work is done the when the contraction has taken place a little then again there is a requirement of atp for the further contractions isn't it until and unless the signals are been transferred from the neural uh, that is central nervous system okay uh, the continuously signals are been uh, sending or been uh, sent to the muscles until and unless the signals are stopped the contraction need to be continued correct if it has to continue then the atp molecules are required again and again for one contraction one atp molecule so again another atp molecule is required that is what is this step is been showing you how how the atp is again re uh, formed okay so then the preparation of the muscle glycogen what is the importance of this glycogen now see the glycogen is present in the muscle reacts with the phosphoric acid liberating during the uh, during the breaking down of the atp to into adp and a con and converted into the glucose phosphate 
glycogen plus phosphoric acid giving you glucose phosphate uh, which is again forming a phosphate molecule here you remember we are going to make out the phosphate molecule from the many sources so that the lost phosphate molecule is regained and forms the atp molecule okay the formation of the fructose uh, fructose next step is the formation of the fructose diphosphate molecules see the formation of the fructose diphosphate is required as the glucose phosphate formed undergo a series of chemical reactions that's what i'm been telling you from the beginning there is a series of reactions happening simultaneously wherein the phosphate molecules are required again and again okay and is converted into the fructose diphosphate this conversion is catalyzed by the enzyme glucose phosphate under an enzymatic activity or the reaction which is going to convert the glucose phosphate to a fructose diphosphate see here which this picture shows you how atp is utilized here during the contraction of the muscle so this is the myosin filament which is having the cross pitch and having the heads which do require an atp molecule the yellow color picture which shows you the atp molecule which has been utilized see once the contraction or the pulling of this uh, um, you know the actin filament part what happens there is again the adp formation wherein it comes back to its normal position okay once atp is not there then the uh, you know globular heads comes back to their original position and then again there is an atp molecule com combining together again it get attaches to the actin filament pulls back the filament and the contractions happens continuously so uh, the formation of the lactic acid fructose diphosphate undergoes a series of chemical reactions changing and uh, is converted into the lactic acid and then the three molecules of atps are formed so fructose diphosphate is giving rise to a lactase a lactic acid and the three atp molecules so here the intention of these chemical reactions is to form the atp molecules or to form the phosphate molecules for the formation of the atp again okay ultimately the energy production is required so that the utilization of energy is very much vigorous and rapid here okay resynthesis of the creatine phosphate so during the during the period of inactivity or the less intense activity uh, creatine is re rephosphorylated by atp to form creatine phosphate the energy for the resynthesis of the creatine phosphate is derived from the breaking down of the glycogen to a, a lactic a lactic acid so you remember now the before uh, formation of the creatine phosphate happened by these two processes which we studied little later ha huh. the creatine plus atp giving you the creatine phosphate plus the atp molecule okay so the reason this is of the glycogen and the lactic acid out of the lactic acid formed that is four by uh, fifth, you know four particles uh, fourth of uh, fourth part of the fifth uh, five parts is uh, resynthesizing of the glycogen in the uh, you know in the um, in the liver muscles and the other um, other tissues and the other um, you know other play, uh, other uh, places where do the atps are required so the lactic acid is giving rise to glycogen plus the water the energy for this resynthesizing of the glycogen is derived from the breaking down of the remaining uh, one fifth of the part of the lactic acid okay the one fourth of one, uh, four, four fifth of the particle of the molecule was re uh, reutilized for the lactic acid conversion to the glycogen and the water molecules okay the one fifth of that particular part of the lactic acid is again utilized in the formation of the atp again and the that is nothing but the energy which i am talking about here the liver glycogen thus formed may be stored in the form of uh, stored in stored provides the glucose which uh, muscle glycogen may again be formed okay the muscle glycogen should be there con cons consistently present in the muscle because there is a during the emergency there is a requirement of the energy so isn't it so energy is required continuously by the muscles here 
then the adp uh, thus the thus as the muscle uh, ex, uh, con uh, uh, no contracts simultaneously the breaking down of the atp and the adp takes place and the uh, and as a result energy is liberated so the adp thus formed is regenerated to atp this you should remember very clearly this is what we are going trying to tell you from the beginning of this video okay by the phosphate denoted by the creatine phosphate so the creatine is converted back to the uh, creatine phosphate by atp molecules generated during the aerobic or the anaerobic breakdown of the glycogen okay so this is the chemical reactions with that were happening till now uh, to form the atp molecules and how the phosphate wood molecules were formed which will be in turn useful for the uh, activities or the biophysical activities of the uh, muscles okay now we'll be studying how exactly that is going to be present here and how the processes is going to take place during the contractions okay that is what is the physiochemical aspects of the muscle contractions here we are talking see in the contractile processes what exactly is going to happen when the contraction is taking place if this is the myosin filament and this is the actin filament this is combining with this and pulling out this okay this filament has been pulled together joining the uh, see if i've show if i've shown you earlier the picture this is what i was trying to tell you and uh, you know the see this is the relaxed state and this is the contractile state wherein from this side the filaments which are their blue color filament which you see is getting contracted and coming closer here see h band is seen here whereas the h band is not seen in the contracted state of the muscle fiber that you should remember that is what we are trying to try trying to tell you the contraction of these muscle fibers are happening okay so coming back to the contractile processes atp which is the source of the energy for the muscle contraction together with the actin and the myosin forms a complex that complex we call it as a actomyosin complex which is going to be utilized during the contraction okay so the resting stage what is happening in during the resting stage that h band is formed isn't it that h band is nothing but the muscles are relaxed and they are into their positions okay what is happening during that period is uh, the actin and the myosin compound actomyosin that is atp complex carry similar changes therefore they repel each other okay the processes do in both the filaments is happening same okay then the uh, you know the release of the calcium ions or the uh, atp molecules formation is happening simultaneously in both the both the filaments thereby resulting the repulsion motion between the two uh, filaments hence forth there is a released state or the resting state of the muscles which is seen there okay what is going to happen during the contraction there are series of processes happening during the contractions okay one by one we'll be studying now the first step is the depolarization of the sarcolemma you if you have seen my first video ultra structure of the skeletal muscles you will understand the sarcolemma what is the sarcolemma sarcolemma is nothing but consists of the uh, lots of uh, myo uh, filaments my, uh, myosin and the actin myo um, you know you will they'll find you will find the uh, filaments which um, uh, sorry muscle fiber which consists of the filaments okay the muscle fibers the bundle of muscle fibers are together in the sarcolemma okay when the when a nerve impulse is being arrived at the junction between the nerve endings and the sorry and the uh, muscles the sarcolemma that uh, at the muscles muscle fiber is depolarized so what is happening when they get the signals the see this is the sarcolemma which is having lots of muscle fibers in it which is going to get uh, which has been connected with the um, you know uh, nerve endings okay when they give the signal then for the contraction then they get depolarized is transported and the interior muscle fiber by a network of uh, channels called as sarco sarcoplasmic reticulum which contains calcium ions 
when a muscle is in the resting state so they contain the calcium ions during the resting state but when they have to be in an active state they'll have to release the calcium ions see the next step is the releasing of the calcium ions the arrival of the muscle nerve impulse causes a release of the calcium ions from the sarcoplasmic reticulum in the next step the conformational changes in the actin filament that is happening once the calcium ions are released what is happening in the actin filament the released a calcium ions binds with the tropomyosin binding filament or the subunit which is changing the conformational changes which are transmitted first to the tropomyosin and then to the actin to the thin filament this prevents the actin to interact with the myosin resulting in the muscle contraction so this permits the actin to interact with the myosin okay so once the calcium ions are released there is a vacation their their place is vacated there this tropomyosin and the myosin can bind together there is an interaction between the myosin filaments and the tropomyosin which is present in the actin filament okay tropomyosin and tropomyosin are present on the actin filament please remember that the uh, tropomyosin filaments has the heads two heads which is going to join with the actin filament so here is a picture which is showing you the actin filament the g actin and the f actin how is it going to be polarized and depolarized uh, picture okay so fourth step is the formation of the actomyosin complex the uh, the atp is present in the myosin is activated and then brings about the hydrolysis of the atp into adp see once the things are done the calcium ions are released now the function of these heads is to combine with the atp then the then there is a pull or the contraction need to happen correct so the energy is generated at the site cross uh, at the site of cross bridge cross bridge is nothing but what the heads and the filament there is a cross bridge being formed see if you can see here this picture this is the cross bridge okay this line which is joining both the filaments is the cross bridge by done by the myosin filament okay so see um, see the cross bridge been formed and the the energy is generated then the uh, then the liver or the uh, cross bridge is formed exerting the tensions or the neighboring actin filament to come closer okay then it will be pulled the the racket racket like uh, actin of cross bridge slides the actin filaments <coughs> then filaments likewise along the myosin filaments if these filaments are here and this is this will be pulled like this together okay then so the relaxation now the relaxation that h band need to be formed the relaxation is when the nerve impulse stops contraction and the cross uh, and the ceases contraction ceases off okay and the muscle fiber returns to the resting stage each muscle fiber in is newly repolarized the sarcoplasmic reticulum withdraws the calcium ions from the surrounding with the decline of the calcium in the atp uh, calcium ion and atp's activities is inhibited so which is released you know before you remember the calcium ions were released into the surroundings now it is going to be collected it back okay it will collect back the uh, calcium ions which were released on the surroundings then it will come back to the resting state and the repolarized from the uh, atp is repolarized to atp uh why are the for, for you know the for phosphogenesis is being formed and the phosphates are formed as usual the normal state will come back okay so the contractions of the muscle fibers with the help of the calcium ions and the in the involvement of the calcium ions atp adp and phosphate molecules is this what is picture which i told you till now what i explained you till now okay at the summary at the whole what exactly is what i was explaining till now see in the summary the whole if you can um, uh, see the picture there were very clearly i have mentioned you mentioned about the formation or the summary of the skeletal um, muscles 
see here uh, arrival of the nerve impulse which is resulting in the depolarization of the fiber membrane okay that is the sarcolemma which is helping in turn in the release of the calcium ions to the environment atpase is activated so once atpase is activated then atp is converted to the adp molecule hydrolysis of the atp to adp releasing the energy which generate a sliding force between the thick and the thin filaments thick filament and thin filament are nothing but the myosin and the actin filaments the summary of the events associated with the relaxation of the muscles is as follows that is the exhaustion of the uh, nerve impulse meaning the nerve impulse is not there now okay once the nerve impulses are stopped to the muscles reaching the muscles the repolarization of the muscle uh, membrane is going to take place that is withdrawal of the calcium ions from the surroundings it will take back the calcium ions then the atp is inhibited so that the atp molecules is not converted to the adp and the resynthesis of the atp from the adp is going to be taking place that is all phosphate molecules uh, from the glycogen uh, converting to the lactic acid and the lactic acid is again breaking down into the atp mole or phosphate molecules do you remember all those steps so that is what is going to happen here so that the formation of the atps will be promoted okay so here ends up this topic about the uh, uh, physiochemical aspects of the uh, mu muscle contractions uh, or the skeletal muscles um, so if you have understood and uh, if you have liked it please like the video and subscribe for, for it for the further videos next video i will be teaching you on the sliding filament theory of the skeletal muscles okay where there there i'll be showing you all these processes are involved in one particular set of reactions uh, set of process wherein uh, you know you can see how the contraction is taking place with all these reactions happening behind stage okay what we see is something different from what is happening behind behind what will happen this is what is the two videos that i have to show you that is the chemical changes which is happening and the physiochemical aspects during the muscle contractions okay so thank you see you for the next video